Hey guys, how are you? Welcome into the Saturday morning episode of the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Peralt. You guys can follow me across all of my socials at Sports Talk Matt. And we are back after, well, a night that I don't know because we are currently starting the second half. It is not looking great for BYU, but it's not dead yet. So we'll see what happens with BYU in Oklahoma State. Uh, we do know that we got the hockey bet wrong. Only one goal for the Penguins. That was blah because of the juice that was laid. Heavy juice. That kills the night most likely if BYU comes back in covers, which is still looking a little unlikely. It'll be barely up, like up a half a unit, or we're going to be down about 1.6 units. So that will take us into the red for the week. Only about one unit, though, so not that big of a deal. Plenty of time to bounce back. BYU, uh, too many turnovers in the first half. Three, uh, two interceptions, one really bad pick by the running back. And the other was a bad pick by the quarterback. Oregon way under. Purdue never scored. So that game in game was 36 and a half. It ended 35 nothing, right? So a uh, nice live number there by the books. But uh, Oregon under 60 was never a sweat. That was an easy under. Penguins was wrong. So one and one going into the BYU game. We don't know yet what's going to happen with BYU, but we'll see. All right. This morning, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern time on the Discord channel. Myself and you guys live chat. If you guys haven't been a part of that, that's growing fast. So like there's, uh, if you go by the number of people that are watching this every weekend, right? There's about like 20,000 people that watch this thing on YouTube. And there's about anywhere from seven to 10,000 of you that listen to this podcast, which thankfully is an amazing, amazing number. Thank you to all of you. But if you haven't come over to the Discord channel to be part of that live chat, that live chat's really fun. It's 30 minutes. I don't just tell you like my full card. We take picks and plays from the audience and what you guys are playing, what you guys are looking at and line movement and late scratches and just overall talking about the card for the day. Saturday is so much better than Sunday. I mean, look, I love the live stream on Sunday. It's super fun, but that Discord channel chat is really cool. If you haven't been a part of it, we have over 200 people every single Saturday that hang out and listen and talk and ask questions. Bettingpros.com slash chat. It's free, okay? Come on in, download. Discord isn't even, it's a secondary app. Betting Pros has got nothing to do with it. It's just on Discord, Betting Pros has their own community. It's like 40,000 people, by the way. It's not like a small community. It's a lot of people. So hopefully I'm going to see some new faces in there here this morning on Saturday as we'll go through the whole card because there are some bonker good games. Tennessee, Georgia. Texas, sorry. <laughs> Tennessee, Alabama. Texas, Georgia. It is the third Saturday of October. Now, if you're an SEC fan, you know what that means. This is like a incredible day. This is the, one of the days in college football, the third Saturday in October, Alabama, Tennessee. <clears throat> I'm not over COVID, right? I mean, I am, but I'm not. We've got a game in Georgia and Tennessee. I'll just tell you right now, I have no bet on it. If I was going to bet it, I'd bet Georgia. Take the points. Kirby Smart's 11-4-1 ATS. He's undefeated against everybody except Alabama. When it comes to top five matchups, until further notice, I would take Georgia. Not betting it. Alabama, Tennessee, I would take Alabama. I think Bama's better. I think they'll play better. I don't really trust a freshman quarterback up against Alabama. And I think Kalen DeBoer will win the game. Uh, I probably would prefer money line over laying any points with Bama, but three is three, and Bama wins. They're probably going to cover. So I would take Bama against Tennessee. I would take Georgia against Texas. Texas wins, but by three. I think you take the points there with Georgia. Maybe they pull a win. Who knows? But I would take the points with Georgia and Texas. But big steam on Texas. Not a ton of steam on Alabama, but some steam on Alabama. So, But I would take Georgia. But I'm not betting either one. Those, are, those games are not part of my card here for us. What is part of my card? Well, first and foremost, let me tell you about our friends at DraftKings and the DraftKings Pick 6. Have you gone and downloaded the new DraftKings Pick 6 app yet? Do that. Use the code JUICE. New Pick 6 customers can play a $5 wager for $50 in Pick 6 credits. That is a guarantee when you use that code JUICE. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. In Connecticut, must be 18+. plus. Age and eligibility restrictions may vary by jurisdiction. Pick 6 not available everywhere, including New York and Ontario. Void where prohibited. See terms at pick6.draftkings.com slash promos for that. Okay. I've already given you two plays on last night's podcast. We gave you Michigan minus four and Maryland plus seven and a half. There's been movement on both those games. Okay. There's been movement. We have seen 
Money coming on Michigan, four and a half, five. So we got a good number there. It dipped down to three and a half for a little bit yesterday and then came right back up. And now it's up to at some books, four and a half, somewhere at five already. So we'll see where that number closes for Michigan on the road at Illinois. Maryland's down to seven at, at most books. Now, there may be buyback coming here. USC may see some action, but Maryland plus seven and a half is down to seven at most books here. So we have a little CLV with both those bets for Michigan and Maryland. What else are we going to play? Okay, let's talk about Cal. I am a fan of this Cal Bears team. We've talked about Cal. We've been involved with Cal uh, probably more than what I thought I would be this year simply because of these West Coast teams playing up against East Coast Big Ten teams or you know Central Time Zone Big Ten teams. And I, I really think there's a big advantage when we're crossing multiple time zones. NC State is going all the way across the country. NC State is 0-6-1 ATS on the year. Cal is 4-2. They're 2-1 they're ATS at home. They've covered their last two games on the road against Pitt. They lost by two as three and a half point dogs. At home against Miami, they lost by one on that ridiculous comeback, the 25-point lead they had that they blew up against Miami. They were 10-point dogs. They covered easily. At home against San Diego State, they were laying 18 and a half. They won by 21 points. On the road against Auburn, we were on Cal in that Auburn game. They were 12-point dogs. They won the game outright. So we've been involved here for a couple of different games. I was on Pittsburgh up against Cal last week, and I was wrong. And just watching this team and watching their quarterback play and watching their running game and watching their defense, I'm impressed with what Cal has looked like. NC State has been an absolute dumpster fire. They were at home the last three games. They lost two of them, 1-1, one, one, didn't cover on any of them. 0-2-1 oh, and one they were the last three games, all of them at home. Now they leave the Eastern time zone and the Central time zone for the West Coast to go play at Cal. Look, the total is 46.5. The number is 9.5. I, I just I cannot back this NC State team. It's it's just a really horrible football team. So I mean, against Syracuse, they were catching one, they lost by seven. Against Wake Forest, they were laying four, they lost by four. Up against Northern Illinois, they were seven point favorites, they won by seven and it pushed. On the road against Clemson, they were catching 17, they lost by 24. That's the only other road game they've had this season. Neutral against Tennessee, they were eight and a half point dogs. That game was in Charlotte. They lost by 41. They got housed. NC State's bad. I'm laying the nine and a half. Give me Cal minus nine and a half at home here to keep this roll going for them. They've covered four of the last five games. Let's make it five out of six here for Cal at home laying nine and a half up against NC State. Other bet, last bet for us. UNLV on the road at Oregon State. Man alive. This number is tough, okay? It opened at 7.5. It's now 6.5. UNLV is 4-2 and two ATS on the year. Oregon State's 2-4. and four. They're 1-3 at home ATS, while UNLV is 2-1 and one on the road ATS. But the last two games for UNLV, they've not covered. We were on them last week against Utah State. They didn't cover as 18.5-point favorites. I was there for the Syracuse game. They lost it outright as five and a half point favorites. The first four games they covered against Houston, Dixie State, or Utah State, Kansas State, and Fresno State. The other side for Oregon State, they lost by five as three point favorites on the road against Nevada in their last time out. They were laying 10 against Colorado State at home. They won by eight. They did cover against Purdue at home. They beat them by 17 as one point favorites. And they did not cover against Oregon, catching 18 and a half. They lost by 35. But I'm not playing a side in this game. Instead, I'm looking at the total. UNLV is 4-2 and two to the over. Oregon State is 4-2 and two to the over. Four straight covers for, UNLV, for, for Oregon State to the over. And three straight overs for UNLV. Fresno State, Syracuse, and Utah State. Over, seven, over by 17 points. Over by 29 and a half points over by 22 points for UNLV. For Oregon State, over 31 and a half points against Nevada, over by 22 and a half points against Colorado State, over by seven and a half points against Purdue, and over by 13 up against Oregon. You, you're going to say, Matt, we're betting the over, right? N no. Look, 
This is a similar play with Oregon and Purdue, right? It was 60. It's now 84 and 44, by the way. 84 and 44 to the under when it gets to 60 points or higher. This is 59 and a half. It's not 60, okay? But it's pretty darn close. It's pretty darn close to 60. I think we're going to see Oregon State look to run the ball and run the clock, okay? Oregon State can move the football on the ground. UNLV's got a good rush defense, but I think Oregon State's going to try to slow down tempo in this game and not get into a boat race here with UNLV. The Rebels are averaging 40 points a game. That's 12th best in college football. Oregon State is scoring 29.8. That's top 50. Oregon State's giving up just 28.6 points per game. That's top 100. UNLV has given up just 23.8 points per game. That's top 50 as well. I just think we're going to see a lot of running. Running clock in college football is not being talked about nearly enough. The number of possessions you need to get over 60 is a ton of points. It's got to come fast. And look, yes, Oregon State has scored, and we've talked about all their overs and what they've looked like, but... I just think this is going to be a lower scoring game and a more of a possession type of game without the quick strikes. Look, any turnover fest you get into, games go over. So this turns into a turnover fest, we're dead, okay? But as long as this game is just played with punts and kickoffs and not turnovers, I don't know these two teams are going to have enough possessions to get over 59 and a half. I think it's an underplay. We're going to go against the grain here, go against the obvious. What everyone's going to say is all this game's a dead over. Okay. I'll zig when everyone else is zagging here. Over, sorry, under 59 and a half for 1.1 units. All right. So the plays here for today, Michigan minus four, Maryland plus seven and a half, Cal minus nine and a half, UNLV on the road at Oregon State under 59 and a half. And there will be an additional play up. As I said before, bettingpros.com slash Matt. I will give you that play on the app. And if you go to bettingpros.com slash Matt, you can go and find that play, fade or follow it, do whatever you want with it. We missed our last two, I think, when I've done that. So hopefully we come up with a W there today on that. Five official plays for the Daily Juice podcast. I will have a couple of other bets that I'll make that I'll tell you about on the live chat. There will be personal plays. They won't be official plays. I'm, I might, I'm not going to have a 10 or 11 bet card today. No way. No more than seven. I mean, I, I, I doubt I'll have eight, but I got five official. I have a couple of personal that I'll throw at you coming up. Bettingpros.com slash chat to join us 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock in the morning Pacific for the live audio chat for week eight, right? Of college football. Yeah. Week eight of college football. Can't believe it's going this fast. My name is Matt Peralt. Follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt every morning. It's the Daily Juice podcast presented by DraftKings.